pretty nostalgic, eh? How about this one? Yeah, that's the sound of childhood right there. Not for me, though. Mine sounded more like... And... I didn't grow up with a PlayStation, and it wasn't until recently that I finally owned one. And I lost one. And I got another. So while I appreciate PlayStation now, I don't have much nostalgia attached to this logo. Although apparently everyone else might say so, since the PS2 is still the highest selling console of all time, even after 20 years. And this was evident as all of my friends and neighbors had a PS2. I didn't care much to own one as a kid since I could just go to their house to play. And we would play all the classics like FIFA, Shrek 2, Star Wars Battlefront, uh, Star Wars Battlefront 2, Short Little 2. Just those games were enough to keep us occupied. And these. Do kids these days even know what these are? Oh no, I'm not talking about Bionicle, of course not. I'm talking about toys. Or did an iPad just replace all that? Anyways, the kids I knew didn't really have the true classics like GTA, Final Fantasy, or any PlayStation exclusive. We mostly had games that were based on things we already knew, such as sports and movies. The same applied for me and my Game Boy. I just played Spider-Man, Power Rangers, and Cars on it, and none of the Nintendo games. Well, I tried getting Pokemon, but that's a story for another time. However, that all changed when I was introduced to a little game by my older cousin. It's me, Mario! From that point on, Nintendo won over my young heart and I was fully invested in the wonderful worlds it brought. You knew I was ride or die with Nintendo if I had one of these. And then, there was one other reason why I didn't have a PlayStation until recently. Halo was everywhere. It dominated every discussion at school. I mean, even the girls talked about Halo. Ain't nobody talked about PlayStation. Everyone had an Xbox and played Halo, Call of Duty, and Battlefield together. It was all over the internet as well, and so I fell in love instantly and wanted in. Although, I came in late to the party and got an Xbox 360 just as the new consoles were coming. Even so, I got an Xbox One eventually, just for the prospect of more Halo. And oh boy, was that a rough time initially. The Master Chief Collection just did not work for years, and the campaign and story for Halo 5 was so disappointing. Not only was it rough for Halo and Xbox, but PlayStation was thriving off of a new renaissance of exclusives. Adding insult to injury, I also moved to Japan in which Xbox had zero presence in. Of course, I was blessed to have lived in Japan, but yeah, you weren't lucky if you saw an Xbox logo. You were cursed. The gaming section and camera and tech shops was just PlayStation and Nintendo. If somehow the shops had Xbox games, a single row would be dedicated for them. I never saw the console itself though. The only time I saw an Xbox One on sale was at a second-hand store for dirt cheap. There wasn't much to commiserate about though. I could still buy games digitally, and I didn't play much online either. If I did, I would play Destiny and Halo with the Australians, or random US soldiers. Both were quite fun to talk to. Also, I mostly just played games on my Wii U, like... Right, this is a video about PlayStation. As the catalog of great exclusives grew, so did my desire to own a PlayStation. I wanted to not only play the all-time greats, but also the random titles that would be exclusive to PlayStation, at least at the time. Actually, not even exclusive to PlayStation. The games are just exclusively not on Xbox. It's just annoying how some games might or might not come out on Xbox, but I knew for sure that they were guaranteed for PlayStation. 
It turns out that these titles are not as random as I initially thought. Most of the exclusives I was interested in are from Japan. And well, I saw firsthand as to why they're not on Xbox. Having enough of being left out and seeing the next generation of consoles coming soon, I finally decided to try to get a PlayStation. And so, in the year 2020, I was actually one of the lucky few that got their hands on a PS4 at a really cheap price. Really, I only paid $100 for it. Look, people weren't selling their PS4s once they found out that only 10 PS5s were made. <laughs> I feel bad for the suckers that preemptively sold their PS4 thinking they'll be buying a PS5 soon. Legends say that they still have not played any games to this day. Besides, there are already a few PS4 games I really wanted to play, plus some more coming soon. And even with the PS5 out, I knew that some games will still come to PS4 for a few years. Look, I don't care that much about performance. I mean, I grew up with Nintendo. And I also bought Pokemon Violet. I, I know, I'm part of the problem. I also heard that the PS5 will be backwards compatible, so I could still play the same PS4 games in the future. And oh boy, am I glad about that. As to how I got it for cheap, I searched through the Facebook Marketplace. I was already using it to sell my old Switch games. It was March 2020, right before the pandemic. I came across some listings for PS4s on sale and then searched for the lowest price. The lowest I found was for $200, and no, I didn't somehow bargain it down to half the price. Sadly, I didn't inherit that ability from my mom. Actually, she probably would have gotten it down to 20 cents. I was living with a friend at the time, and he also wanted a PS4, so I told him we could split the cost and share the console. He was down with the idea, so I contacted the seller and she gave us a spot to make the exchange. It was at a cafe in a shopping center, probably close to where she lived. We drove to the spot and I sent her a quick message describing our appearance. We took a table and waited before she finally approached us. She had a tote bag with which I assumed had the console inside. We said our greetings and she showed us the inside of the bag. It was a tangle of black wires, so she allowed us to inspect further while apologizing that she didn't have the box. I reached in and felt the contents, making out a wide plastic slab along with some other things. I rested the bag on the table and pulled everything out. Sure enough, it had a base PS4 along with a power cord, an HDMI cable, two controllers, and surprisingly some games. However, it was more surprising what the games were. She didn't seem like the type to play them, I could be wrong, but the games were NBA 2K and two FIFA games. She said she just threw them in for free. We didn't question it, and the console seemed fine, so we handed her the cash and collected everything in the bag. We gleefully returned to the car and immediately went to the nearest game store to buy our first PS4 games. Along the way, I asked my roommate if he was interested in any of the games we just acquired. He said he actually had the same 2K game for his PS3, so he might as well keep it to see the difference. As for the FIFA games, no. I wasn't interested in either, so I thought I might as well sell the FIFA games while there. We arrived and I made my way to the counter to sell the FIFA games while my roommate browsed around. As I stated my intent, the employee apologized and said, Oh sorry man, but I can't take these games. I asked why and he explained, Well you know how they are. There's a new one like every year so even if it's a couple years old, it's not worth much. We can't take the pre-owned copies if even the unopened copies won't sell. There's just no demand. I immediately found it odd how I could sell LEGO Star Wars 3 on the 3DS, but not a 2 year old FIFA game? But I understood, and I also understood why we were given the games for free. I gave up and now had time to browse the PS4 games available. I saw my roommate and it looked like he decided to get Soul Calibur 6. I already knew what I wanted and found Marvel's Spider-Man. And so, we walked into the store with two games, and came out with two games, and two wastes of plastic. We got home and hastily hooked up the PlayStation to the TV. Controllers in hand, we both sat in front of the screen waiting for the console to boot up. However, when we did, we both turned our heads toward each other and went, uh... It appears the console was not rebooted, and there were already two accounts made. One was a guy's name, and the other was a seller's name. We didn't want to keep their accounts, so we snooped around to make sure they were logged out of everything. 
Looking through the guy's account, he mostly had Call of Duty, GTA 5, and various sports games. None digitally available. We also saw that he had a Netflix, and there were two profiles with their names. Hey mom, hey dad. Go ahead and cancel the Netflix. Uh-huh. Yeah, I found another one for us again. I'm just kidding, of course. I made sure to log out of their Netflix and PlayStation accounts. Next was the girl's account, and it was barren. There were few games and was most likely a guest account for multiplayer games. I logged out of her account as well and deleted both from the console. But then it made me question the person we bought this from. The PS4 most likely belonged to the guy, perhaps her boyfriend, but she was the one selling. She probably sold the rest of the games except for the ones we got. I mean, how else would she have known how worthless they are? Maybe the guy was busy or away and allowed her to sell the console. Maybe something happened to him and she sold his belongings. Maybe she desperately needed some extra cash and sold it without his knowledge. Maybe he cheated on her and she wanted revenge by selling his stuff. Maybe it's a combination of everything. Oh well, not our problem. I don't know, maybe you guys can come up with a better theory. So my roommate and I finally had a PS4 and took turns playing on it. Although I didn't get to play much since I was busy with schoolwork. I definitely got my chance to play because the pandemic went into full motion right before spring break. My roommate also went back to his family so I had the PlayStation and the whole apartment for myself. Yay. All of my exams were cancelled so I basically spent two weeks playing Spider-Man and Animal Crossing since it just released. Spider-Man was fun, maybe not worth getting a whole console for, but it contributed to its worth. The visuals blew me away, just taking photos of the game was fun. The combat was also good and fun to toy with. Back into your cells and lock the door behind you, okay? Please? And simply swinging around Manhattan was a delight. I also liked the story and how it switched up the characters. Knowing previous stories about Spider-Man actually helped the narrative rather than making it feel redundant. The game was good. I'll be honest though, I think I had a lot more fun messing around in Animal Crossing. I don't know, Spider-Man never had me waking up early in the morning just to play immediately. Eventually the next quarter started, but it was all online and nobody knew how to do anything. My professor spent most of the quarter fumbling around with Zoom and online assignments. Thus, work was light and I was able to spend more time with the PlayStation. The next two games I played were basically the whole reason why I wanted to get a PlayStation. The first was Tetris Effect. And I went through great lengths to play this game. I mentioned it in my video about how I tried gaming with a MacBook, but I converted my Mac into a PC just so I could play Tetris, and it ran poorly. It diminished the enjoyment I had playing the game, so I had to stop. But I still wanted to play the game, so it became the last impetus I needed to search for a PS4. And it was glorious being able to actually play the game. The smooth frame rate, the overall quality, the density of the particles, and the larger screen truly made a difference. Tetris Effect is not just a game, it's an experience to behold. And an experience available on almost every system now. I don't have attachment issues. I already enjoy playing Tetris, but this game truly takes it to the next level. It's all about achieving the flow state, and the game does everything it can to fully immerse you through its visuals, sounds, and gameplay. There's just no other game that could get me into the zone like Tetris Effect. The next game I also really wanted to play was Final Fantasy VII Remake. The game was teased for years, and it was coming so soon. And the best part was that I could actually play it. I tried a demo and was hooked. It ran fine even on a base PS4, aside from the fact that it sounded like it was about to take flight. And so I got the game right when it came out and binged through it. Lockdown wasn't so bad now that I could be immersed into Midgar. The visuals were gorgeous and striking, some of the best I've seen. Except for that one door. The music as well was among the best. I'd leave the PlayStation on just so I could hear this theme in the background. Mm -hmm. 
The combat system really hooked me. I love the mix between real-time and turn-based combat. It never felt slow or mindless, it was just enough to manage and strategize with. Although the combat leaned more heavily on the turn-based aspects since basic attacks and dodges aren't very effective. Regardless, I would love to see more games with combat like this. It's enough to get me excited for the sequels. As for the story, there were some parts that were rough to go through, especially in English. Wit, big sword, but no skills. I've got skills. Be nice. I'm doing my best. I still ended up liking the characters though and would love to see more. I never played the original so I am disappointed that I won't experience the same story with this new series. I'm not gonna know the implications of anything. Like why is this cat saying so devastated? Who is this caveman dude? I don't even know who this guy is but the game keeps insisting I do. Despite its problems, I still love the game and the time I spent with it. It certainly made complete isolation much more manageable. There was much more I wanted to do with the PS4. I also wanted to play Persona 5 Royal, Bloodborne, Ghost of Tsushima, God of War, and so much more. I actually already had God of War, just didn't get to play it at the time. Another friend of mine also just got a PS4, but it was brand new and came bundled with the game. He wasn't interested in it though, and mostly bought the PS4 for MLB The Show, GTA 5, and Call of Duty. So he gave me the code and I redeemed it, I just couldn't download it since both Final Fantasy and Modern Warfare took up the entire hard drive. <sighs> but before I could play anymore, I had to make some tough decisions. Around April, we got word from our school that the next quarter and perhaps year would only be online. Because of that, it made no sense to keep the apartment since my roommate and I no longer had to be near campus. And I didn't want to burden my friend if I was the only one still living in the apartment. My family also lived in Japan, so it was hard for me to return, but it was only going to be harder for me if I didn't. And so we agreed to cut the lease for the apartment and move out completely. My roommate returned for a brief bit so that he could pack up his belongings. As he was doing so, I made another tough decision by letting him keep the PS4. It just wasn't fair for him since he didn't get to play on it much and I already had a home console. I also gave him all of the games. Well, except for Tetris because that was digital, uh, God of War since I already redeemed it on my account, and Modern Warfare since I bought that on sale digitally when I probably should have waited to get it on Xbox instead. So in reality, I gave him Spider-Man, Final Fantasy, and uh... <sighs> this one hurts me the most to give away... The FIFA games. I already had my fun with the PlayStation and wanted him to have fun as well, so at least I was able to end things on a good note. And ever since I left him with the PS4, he's been able to play Final Fantasy, Ghost of Tsushima, and Genshin Impact, in which he gambled hundreds of dollars away on waifus. What have I done? I packed up my things as well and was set to return to Japan. However, I actually had to move out a week before my flight, so I stayed with my aunt for a bit. My little cousins also had a PS4, and I offered them the FIFA games long before since they also liked football. Except they not only had the games already, but they also sold them already. Since I now had a PlayStation account, I logged into their PS4 and was able to show them one cool little game. Tetris. But they weren't that interested and I knew that already. I mostly installed it just so I could play it one last time. Huh, maybe I do have a problem. I didn't find out until recently, but apparently I'm still logged into your PS4. I noticed that I would get random trophies for games I didn't own. When I visited them again a couple of years later, I saw they were using my account to play Minecraft split screen. Anyways, I returned back to Japan leaving behind all of my friends and most importantly, the PlayStation. I was fine with that one for at least a while, but then I encountered something truly wonderful.
I mentioned this in my Elden Ring video, but I really got into the From Software games during 2020. I played Dark Souls Remastered on my Switch and was invested from there. I then played Sekiro and Dark Souls 3 on my Xbox. Since I couldn't play Bloodborne and Demon's Souls, my interest in attaining a PlayStation returned once more. And then came one more game. Elden Ring. A trailer finally came out. The game was real, and I had to play it. And so in 2021, I was emboldened to get a PlayStation once more. I wanted to play many old and future exclusives, and I wanted to play Elden Ring at the highest quality. Now, I kind of wanted to get a Series X as well, but if I had to choose a next-gen console, the PS5 was better for me. If I were to get a Series X, I could play exclusives like Starfield. I could also carry over all the games I previously owned, and I could have access to Game Pass. Really though, the reason why I would get a new Xbox was the same exact reason all the other times before. To play Halo. This time it was Halo Infinite. However, I could already play Infinite with what I had. The game was still coming to the Xbox One. Heck, I could even play the game on my Mac. I know future exclusives like Starfield aren't coming to the Xbox One, but they're also going to be available on PC and Game Pass day one. At that point, I might as well save up for a gaming PC instead. Albeit it'll actually be cheaper to buy both consoles though. As for abandoning my old games, yes that sucks, but I could buy them again, especially when most of them are dirt cheap now. And so, the only thing I can't play are the true Xbox One exclusives like... Alright, I'm getting a PS5. Of course, I have actual reasons for getting a PS5. There are exclusives like Demon's Souls, Returnal, and Ratchet and & Clank, but I'm not really interested in buying a PS5 for those games. Really, I was interested in just having a PlayStation again. Many of the games I ended up getting were all still playable on the PS4. There were games like Ghost of Tsushima, Spider-Man Miles Morales, Elden Ring, and God of War Ragnarok. The only true exclusive I have so far is Demon's Souls. You're telling me the PS4 can handle this, and this, but not Demon's Souls? It looks like it just needed a loading screen to be ported. Honestly, if I still had the PS4, I probably would have not been that interested in getting a PS5. But of course there are more benefits than just exclusives like simply having a next-gen console. I can have all these fancy graphics in Fortnite and play Elden Ring in 60fps. There's the super fast SSD that can load games instantly. Man, that never gets old. There's the DualSense controller, which is a nice novelty. I talked about how I liked its features in my controller video. I just wish it didn't die every time I play it on my PS5. But the games are my real motive for owning a PS5, and that motive will only grow in 2023. And hey, even with the PS5, my Xbox hasn't been completely left in the dust. I still play Halo Infinite despite its problems, and I still use Game Pass. I know PlayStation Plus exists, but it still can't compete with this catalog. Now, before searching for a PS5, I had to choose between having a disk drive or not. Both PS5s have the same exact specs, it's just that the $100 difference went into having a Blu-ray player or not. I don't have many DVDs, and my Xbox was already my DVD player. As for having games physically and collecting them... Alright, I like collecting games, but there are good reasons for having games physically. There's longevity and preservation, until there isn't. Many physical games go on sale frequently, that's why I have... a few. I probably wouldn't have gotten these two if they weren't so cheap, and I fell in love with... one of them. Another great thing about physical is that I could sell them, as long as they're not FIFA. But if it came to it, I was willing to take the L and sacrifice having a disk drive if no other PS5 was available. I was aware of how difficult it was to attain a PS5 at the time. There was an overall shortage of just about everything, and scalpers made things worse by hoarding and selling consoles at exorbitant prices. Occasionally on Twitter, I would see accounts that were posted when a PS5 is in stock. So I started following one of them and turned on notifications. I looked at all of the stores that were tracked and made an account with each of them. I added in my credit card and was ready to rush through checkout if I was ever lucky enough to add a PS5 to my cart. Several months passed of me just missing a notification by minutes. As soon as I saw a number higher than one, I knew it was sold out. There was one incident where I was lucky enough to add the PS5 to my cart online, but by the time I hit checkout, they were all gone. 
Suddenly, news spread around that Best Buy was going to be the first retailer to sell PS5s within their physical stores. I was tempted to call in sick for work, but it would have been short notice and not worth the risk. I'm kind of glad I did because I heard from the Best Buy employees how the line stretched for miles and people camped out the night before. I'm also glad I didn't have to go through all of that because not long after, I got an invitation from PlayStation Direct to order a PS5. I clicked on the link and was entered into a queue, waiting about an hour before I could see the store. The adrenaline kicked in as I saw the timer go down and I was allowed in. I rushed through, but was assailed by doubt every single step of the way. Did I pick the right PS5? Which one did I want anyways? I wanted a disk drive. Maybe I should save the $100. No, a disk drive is better. Do I even need a PS5? Do I need an extra controller? Should I buy a game too? Oh, right there. They're not discounted. Did I type the right address? Did I type it correctly? It might take a while to be shipped. Is right? it going to my home? I hit confirm, but did I really order a PS5? Did I get a PS4 instead? Almost lost my cool there, but I did it. I successfully ordered a PS5. However, the respite was brief as I realized maybe I did put in the wrong address. See, I wasn't actually staying in my apartment at the time. There was a big issue to where it needed to be renovated and I needed to stay elsewhere for a bit. In the middle of that rush, I reasoned that it will take a while for the PS5 to be shipped, so I might as well send it to my apartment instead of my temporary location. However, a few days later, I got an email that my PS5 was arriving tomorrow. There were many issues with that, as I had a meeting that day, I was still living in my temporary spot, I was quite far from my apartment, but I needed to be there to sign off on my package. Also, it's a PS5, I'm not risking leaving it there for days. And so what I did was I camped out in my car in front of the apartment while attending the meeting online and waited vigilantly for the delivery truck to arrive. I was huddled in my car, facing my front door, phone in hand, listening in on the meeting. Eventually it ended, but the truck still hasn't arrived yet, so at least I could wait while listening to music. I even packed a lunch and ate a sandwich while waiting. But it wasn't enough and I was still hungry. Finally, just around the corner I saw the truck appear, and it made its way through my neighborhood. I saw it approach my apartment, but it didn't look like it was slowing down. Then it passed right by me and went further down the street. I immediately checked my phone for any emails and then found the tracking. The package wasn't even in my city and got delayed. I sat there for a while in utter disappointment, having wasted a day on nothing. Eventually life resumed, days passed, and I returned to my apartment. I finished unpacking my clothes and stuff when I suddenly got an email. Your package has arrived. I rushed to my door and opened it to see at my feet a large box. I huddled it and dragged it inside. Knife already nearby, I sliced open the tape, and finally, I had a PS5. That whole thing about requiring a signature was a lie, but it didn't matter. The hunt was finally over. After setting up the console, the first game I played was Tetris Effect. Come on now, what else do you think I would say? That's just the fact it's been like every single punch. I also tried Astro's Playroom, which came with every PS5. It was actually very charming and a blast to play. It shows off the full capabilities of the PS5, and it also felt like a celebration of PlayStation. I mean, look at all of this wonderful stuff that I have no nostalgic attachment of. But just because I don't have any prior memories with PlayStation doesn't mean that I can't start them. I'm just a little late to the party as a fully independent adult. But it means that I'm fully free to build my nostalgia from here and explore all I could with PlayStation. And I still have much to explore even after playing all of these games. I'd love to talk about how I had fun with each of them, but talking about Elden Ring alone would double the duration. I'll at least talk about the most recent game I played, God of War Ragnarok. Wow, this game was great. Playing the first God of War, I recognized that the game was well made, but I didn't really fall in love with it. I assumed I would be the same with this game, but am I ever glad to be wrong? It surpasses the previous game in every way, and people already herald 2018's God of War as a masterpiece, and even the greatest game ever made. Their minds must have melted while playing this then. Combat was great as always. I love how it could be as simple or as complex as you want it to be. The repertoire has been expanded and it's well accompanied by a slew of new enemies and bosses more importantly. The graphics and scenery are of course stunning. No ray tracing necessary. 
The levels are well made, but what really surprised me was how much they opened up. The size of these areas strike a good balance as they're open enough to incite curiosity and dense enough to not feel overwhelming. What's more surprising is that these areas are optional. After each level, the game shows you an open area and says, oh yeah, you can explore that if you want, or skip to the next story beat. I mean, why wouldn't I? It's like going on tour around California and the guy being like, oh yeah, here's Disneyland by the way, you can take a look at it if you want, or we could just continue the tour. Even if the story is a linear tour, it's engaging nonetheless. I enjoyed the narrative more since things are way more complicated than before and the stakes are at its highest. It was interesting seeing how each character reacts to Ragnarok, especially Odin. I love how they portray him as being quaint, but you know he's much more cunning and duplicitous just from his reputation, and yet he apparently isn't. Just like my ex, you toxic, manipulative, lying b- I'm a little disappointed by the climax only because I was expecting something so different. I'd change a few things, but overall it still has a great ending and a fantastic narrative. It's rare for a game to make me feel guilty, but I felt so bad for one character, and they were right about how I mistreated them. It wasn't just something forced by the game in the cutscene, it was my repeated behavior and ignorance that caused that guilt, and that truly hit. Another part of the game that hits harder than Mjolnir is the music. I haven't felt a theme so rousing and uproarious since Skyrim's Dragonborn. God of War Ragnarok is absolutely one of the best games ever made and should be an essential experience for anyone that owns a PS5. I don't ever think it's worth buying a whole console just for one game, but two games on the other hand, maybe. Oh, now I'm convinced. 2022 was already a great year for PlayStation and gaming in general. Moving on to 2023, it looked like we'll be seeing more exclusives come to the PS5. Ragnarok might have been this final send-off for the PS4 from Sony as every exclusive from now on will only be on PS5. And maybe PC. And this extends to third party as more studios will also abandon the last gen consoles. PSVR will also come out. I guess that counts as exclusive to PS5. Ooh, but I can play Tetris in VR. Oh, never mind, I'm not doing that again. These exclusives are also arriving on good timing as Jim Ryan has averred that the shortage is over and that more people can buy a PS5. And well, other than the holiday rush, I've noticed that it has been getting easier buying a PlayStation. I recently saw some behind the counter at my local Best Buy, and I saw how more of my friends are upgrading to a PS5. Even the friend I gave the PS4 to upgraded, and he found his at GameStop. Another was able to order online from PlayStation Direct. If you want good guides on getting a PS5, you could follow in my steps, but I recommend the Verge's guide as it's comprehensive enough and up to date. I'll link it in the description. Also, when it comes to buying games, don't, as they might already be on the PlayStation Plus Extra catalog. I wish this service came out when I got my PS5, because most of the games I own are already on there. I could have saved so much money since it's just $15 a month to play all of these games. Sadly, it isn't exactly like Game Pass since the newest PlayStation games aren't on there, and won't be for a long while. Even the newest Ratchet and Clank isn't on there yet. 2023 looks like it'll be a great year for PlayStation and gaming in general. There are many games I'm looking forward to, but out of everything, there is one or two that's got me real excited. And that game is not Tetris, I promise. That's my most anticipated movie. No. My most anticipated game is FIFA 24, baby, because this game is going to be a complete disaster. See, EA isn't actually making FIFA games anymore, so FIFA themselves are scrambling to make a new game and a whole dev team within a year. Now EA is still making a football game, but it's under the name EA Sports FC, so we're actually getting two new football games this year. Can't wait to somehow be burdened by both games when they come out.